Welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave as we get started for a, uh, a very early Thursday morning over here from a bright and sunny health singy Finland as always. It's actually raining in the middle of summer right now, but it is sunny at the same time, which is actually quite the mind fuck. Anyways, plenty to talk about on Bitcoin because I do want to follow up on the short and uh, medium term time frames. As we've been following the last few days as Bitcoin surpassed the short term time frame uh, critical point, I believe it was two days ago at 92.50 ish region and now initiating it and still kind of working its way towards that 95.50 ish target. 90 600 ish region for the short term uh for the short term time frames and and i believe if i look over here we got just about 50 bucks short of that uh yesterday bitcoin on uh on Bit mexico getting up to about 9500 ish region anyways um other than that let's go check a look let's go take a look at the crown chain application which can be found at app.crowntraining.net and you can see that the open interest is actually getting over 2 billion for the first time since this uh since this consolidation started in uh what was it late may i believe or, or early april anyways um still looking for the overall break of the greater range plus the open interest read on top of that the greater range still stands at about 8900 to the down side and about 9900 to the upside but what's also interesting about this is that we are seeing open interest move up with price action now volumes kind of absent and volatility is still leaves a lot to be desired but i do think that it you know it adds a little bit more um a little bit more umph into the uh into the current posturing on bitcoin especially when we go look at the world markets right now of which i really want to uh, touch on traditional markets uh, quite a bit today and actually even gold too anyways bitcoin dominance coming down quite aggressively as well we did say that yesterday there we're seeing bifurcation in the alt in in, in the alt market actually and i want to go back over this again today as well because there are there's definitely some alts that are looking very good and very strong wrong. I mean, obviously, Link being one of them. And then there's just some shit coins that are still just looking like absolute shit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I do feel like, and we kind of spoke about this in the um, in the program Discord last night, that uh, we're seeing bifurcation in the market between kind of like the old guard passing on to the new guard as uh, perhaps we enter into a new cycle here. Anyways, fear and greed index, um, quite literally stagnant at 44, which is interesting as Bitcoin did have a nice little $200 rally yesterday. And everything else looking looking more or less the same as uh, as the other day as well. So it's interesting to see how the shifting uh, tides are going around. Also, of course, before uh, before I forget, all of the programs are on sale for twenty percent off. No code is needed. And what else do I want to say about that? Definitely watch the videos that accompany them as they're going to go into detail explaining to them who they're for, who they're not for, blah, 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 blah. You already know all this. Uh, or, or maybe if you don't, then definitely go check out the videos. As uh, I should always say, make sure that you understand that these are going to take a long time. You know, these, uh, especially the TA program and the options program, these are, you know, 35, 35 hour plus long programs. The Neophyte program, a lot better for beginners, like super, super beginners, um, but it's a lot less time intensive. So make sure that you have enough time to invest in those if you're going to make the most out of it and then of course I, I do always want to say this as well can you learn how to be a trader yes is it hard as fuck yes can you do it though well yes but it's going to take a lot of time and and what i've typically found is it typically takes people like a year to a year and a half if they even are the type of person who's going to make it to begin with which requires not just you know like doing the actual you know content but also but also you know applying it and, and and really being um and really being meticulous with keeping uh with keeping data trading journals everything and uh and that's really where that's really where i see people have the best results other than that, um, I'll let the videos do the explaining for that one. Subscriptions, uh, we do have the three-month jewel package for 20% off if you commit to a little bit of a longer plan there. And of course, with the jewel, watch the videos. <laughs> and I should always say with the jewel, if you don't already have your risk management and position management down, it's not the magic pill. It's not going to teach you risk management. It's not going to make up for poor risk management skills. So if that's not down pat, then it's you know it's not really going to help. Anyways, uh, partners, uh, over here, we do have more of all offering up his pine strip mastery program completely new and will teach you how to uh, code your own indicators in trading views pine script okay great all right that's enough shilling for this morning let's go on to gold as gold takes its way up above 1800 for the first time in years since 2012 actually that's kind of crazy that that's actually that's actually <laughs> that's actually crazy uh, that's actually deadly crazy i remember watching gold go all the way from like 130 or sorry uh not 130 to 130 from this 1800 1900 region uh years and years ago i guess jesus christ man it doesn't it doesn't seem like it was that long ago but 
I guess when I look at a chart, it was, fuck man, these gray hairs, they really do mean something. Anyways, <laughs> it's like terrifying. I'm <laughs> realizing my own mortality on, uh, on, on video. Anyways, uh, looking at this, I still have the same targets, uh, you know, extended to 18, uh, or sorry, uh, basically 1900, a shade under 1900 looks like 1880, 1890-ish regions where I'll be looking towards. And then overall, I mean, this is still one of the better charts across all of the lands. Let's even put it on a uh, linear scale. It's about the same, you know, looking very, 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 very girthy here. And, uh, and I would be looking for overall continuation, uh, daily is continuation as well. And I don't really, you know, maybe, you know, maybe a short term pullback back down to test around 1800 ish region in the, sh in the very short term, but that's not what I'm concerned with on a chart like this. It's a higher term timeframes that are looking very healthy here. The weekly, monthly and quarterly all looking very strong with flying colors as Elsa fumbles in the background. And, uh, and yeah, looking at the monthly right here looks pretty damn good. Uh, however, still got a long time to go and let's check out the quarterly as well, which we did close la uh, coming into this month and looking pretty damn good here, actually closing on new all time highs, uh, specifically. So I am actually looking for this potentially to make new all time highs from this run. This is very constructive over a long period of time. Okay. All right. Let's go check out, uh, NASDAQ futures of which <laughs> there's your quarterly on NASDAQ, by the way, it looks pretty damn good. But yesterday, I want to follow up on yesterday's analysis. So yesterday I did say that we were likely to come back down to about 10,450. I was obviously wrong on that. It did get down to about 10,500, but reaccumulated right in this region. And, and instead of uh, coming down to that 10,450 target, just flags out at a very high level and then continuation, new all time highs. I mean, it's the market that never goes down. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Daily looks like very obvious continuation here as well. Maybe another test back down at 10,600 ish region, but I do think that uh, it's going to give another drive higher uh, and continue this all time high run. Weekly is going to be potentially setting up for a massively strong closure here. What's going on over there? <laughs> uh oh, Elsa's lost her contact lens. My glasses. Um, we already looked at the uh, we already looked at the quarterly, but uh, but so let's also look at the uh, the monthly right here. Monthly is looking pretty damn good as well. Obviously, a lot of time to go there, but I just want to keep a perspective of the higher term time frames and realize that uh, based off of you know especially the way that we could close this weekly, as uh, you know as 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 long anywhere above ten thousand six hundred looks good to me, and, and that is even kind of the last what would be um, higher low on the daily right here after that after that breakout from this. I mean, what do you want to call? It? It's just a I guess that's a flying W if you want to get super specific with pattern. Patterns. Um, there is a measure move to be made off that, but I think that we already have it plotted in. Yeah, we did. Um, and the target would actually be right around about 10,750 ish region. Now it is also of note that we did close NAS futures over one spot, two, seven, two, uh, Fibonacci exp extension right here. And so I would be looking for that to re to be retested as a base. However, as long as we're above it, I, I, I do look for it to put in a little bit of a consolidation in this region, uh, between 10,750 and 10,650 essentially. And then any sort of a daily total closure above 10, uh, six or sorry. 10750 getting mixed up with all my words right now uh and i'd still be looking for this um this measure move from the inverted head and shoulders that we put in uh february march and april right here uh to play out which still has a very valid target all the way up to about a little bit north of eleven thousand. kind of strange how this seems to line up with some higher term time frame bitcoin targets as well uh as far as numbers goes and and what's also interesting about that is that it does actually meet the one spot 414 fib extension over here as well um, so overall, I'm still kind of looking north, north towards there on the, on the higher term timeframes, uh, but short term timeframes, you know, are we seeing continuation? I mean, it looks like continuation to me may, you know, maybe another, uh, move back down to test around 10, 600 ish region, but, uh, it's really the weekly that I'd be looking at for now, uh, to kind of judge that more medium to long term um, uh, immediate strength, um, as of right now looks looks fine overall uh looking at e-mini futures for spy same sort of thing but less strong overall obviously not making new all-time highs alongside nasdaq futures but putting in a nice space after breaking out of this what do you want to call this? I mean, I don't really have a word for this one uh, as if, if, you know, if I am going to pretend to be a pattern trader, which I'm not really myself, but we do have a golden cross on uh, on daily exponential move damage between that green 55 and that purple 200 right there, setting in a higher low along the way, and then also taking out that last kind of uh, liquid zone high right here. If I want to put my blue boxes in there, it looks like it's been retested yesterday and so far so good. Uh, I'd still say short term, medium term, looking for 320, uh, three region and more long term, 
more long term if that area does get closed above, especially coming into this next weekly closure uh, coming tomorrow, then I would extend those targets to 334 region um, as I imagine NASDAQ should show the way. So for right now, it looks like uh, all the market leaders like Microsoft, uh, app, a, uh, Apple, Tesla right now are all looking pretty damn good. I mean, we had potential reversals in yesterday and then just gets bought back on up uh, the following day. I, that's, I mean, that's, Jesus Christ, man, that's brutal. That's brutal. I mean, technically this is a shooting star and I'm sure a lot of people, play, I would have played this. Um, however, it didn't even take out the low of it on the, you know, on the following day. That is <laughs> one, another, another constant reminder of waiting for conf confirmation while sometimes you will lose out on a little bit of profit. Sometimes it can be the better way. Um, not really anything else to say about a chart like this. I mean, it just it, it just looks generally good. Uh, as an object in motion tends to stay in motion, and this one likely to make new all time highs, especially after yesterday. Jesus Christ, man, what is what a girthy green dildo there. Apple, same thing. Apple even made new highs off of that. I put you know put in a shooting star, then just literally opens up and takes out the prior high from the day before. I mean, that's a clear fake out. Jesus Christ, man, brutal. Tesla, uh, Tesla, a little bit shaky here. Um, gaps of notice to the downside, 1225 and uh, an 1120-ish region. Um, Tesla could could look a little bit toppy here. Let's I, I'd, I'd want to see what uh, what the weekly close is at. Potential island gap could be created here if, if it does, especially close below. It's called 1300. Um, but two days left of trading to go, not really appropriate to call it right now. So let's go over and check out Bitcoin uh, with all of that in mind, because the, the world markets are relatively strong here, just you know, just overall. And following up on the uh, short and medium term time frame analysis from the last few days, you can see right here that we did take out uh, both the 21 exponential moving average and the bottom side of this blue box territory, which you know I was skeptical of, but technically speaking, as we've been saying, the target for that, uh, you know, for that going level by level would just be about 10,500 or 10,500. What the fuck is wrong with my tongue today? Uh, 9550 to 9600 region right here, which I, I do think Bitcoin's still kind of working its way towards. And uh, and that target is valid as long as Bitcoin is essentially right in that 21 exponential moving average, which is now uh, governing at the top side of the blue box at around 9300-ish region. So I do like that area for a nice risk management uh, tool. Um, a lot of people were talking, or I think a lot of people were talking about, or maybe I was talking about, about it with someone the other day, uh, positioning some, uh, some call spreads around this region, which I still have and I do kind of like. I'm still staying away from trading spot price action or or, or, or any sort of futures right here. Um, but I do like uh, I do like I do like spreads in this territory when we are kind of right smack dab in the middle of the range with volatility still absolutely crushed to fucking death. I mean this is this is st <laughs> this this has to be in your in the back of your mind at all at all minutes, hours and seconds of the day that historical volatility percentile is just crushed beyond crushed. And I mean, is it expanding right here? Ten technically it is a little, a little bit only because the last, few, because the last like three, four weeks have been so fucking low, like unbelievably low that, uh, that now, you know, a five read on this actually stands out as a little bit of a, a uh, little bit of movement, huh? Anyways. Um, Anyways, uh, yes. So overall, uh, yeah, I do. I do still think that Bitcoin's heading up to ninety five fifty. Uh, sorry, ninety five. Yes, fifty to ninety six hundred ish region. At which another short term, uh, I would be looking for another short term pullback, maybe test back down to like ninety four hundred ish region. But that is only, you know, that is only short term. Uh, this starts to look a lot more healthy, keeping the general uh, um, uh, markets in mind. You know, going back to traditionals and uh, and gold, especially. You know, I, I do th I do think that it pull back short term there, but very likely it does start to play its way up towards our 9800, 9900 uh, liquid zone up here as uh, that does or we do have to remember that there is definitely hidden bullish divergence on the two day total time frame and I believe the three day as well. Yeah, the three day has it as well. In fact, the three day a little bit more powerful here too, uh, coming in from there and there and more recently there all making lower lows on RSI. Sorry, it's a little bit further back than that. No, it's even more aggressive than what I thought. It's this point, this point, and uh, in this current point right here, um, of which Bitcoin obviously put in higher lows along the way. So I still like the three day 21 for a nice, uh, perhaps long-term position management area. That's currently hovering a little bit below 9,200. 
kind of around that 92.50-ish region that we just spoke about. So I do like the confluence there as well. Looking at the two-day, um, same sort of thing around the 21 exponential average uh, and 10 simple actually, uh, 92.50 uh, governing that area and same sort of hidden bullish divergence in play as well. And typically, you know, when you do see something like that, you are going to see a move or at least a try back up to the middle of the range. The middle of the range, I would st I would say is about 95.50 to 9,600 and, uh, and very likely still, you know, the top side of the range, which, uh, which I maintain at about uh, 9,900, 10,000 if you you want to be super conservative and of course because this one's man this one oh man yeah, this one, this one's still interesting from a structure perspective as well I mean obviously these higher lows are being printed in on the two day and three day but we still don't see it on CMEs although CME is obviously getting picked up here you know which one do you go with oh motherfucker is is there is there something playing in the background? No, I don't think so. All right, sorry. I thought that there was like some sound playing in the background. Jesus Christ, man! It would be a, it would be an absolute travesty to be 15 minutes into a video and uh, and it looks like all the audio is distorted. That's actually happened in the past before. That's actually happened. There's there uh, I there was one time specifically where I recorded like a 55 minute long video. 55 fucking minute long video. 55 fucking minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized my so, microphone's not connected. Great one, fucking great. Jesus, man. A lot of expletives were said that day. Should also note that um, on our higher term time frames, like the two day and three day, and following up from uh, from the last couple days of analysis, we do see momentum also is turning up with price action as well. Here's your two day Stokes, which will remain to the upside as long as Bitcoin price action is above 9050. So that's essentially where the last prior. Uh, two-day low would be so again just looking at it from a trending perspective it's, it's essentially saying that you know if you're looking for that to happen it's happening now I suppose uh, looking at looking at uh, divergence on the other side we don't see anything you know nothing problematic from a hidden bearish divergence uh, perspective and, uh, and I suppose that that wouldn't even be an option here because well it isn't an uptrend as far as this consolidation goes uh, technically speaking we do have higher lows in place higher highs a little bit a uh, little bit more a little bit uh, you know, a little bit more in limbo, of course, as we did put a put in a, a lower high right here. But you go with the former trend until it actually officially switches is uh, is my rule for that one. However, um, can can be a little bit of a laggard, of course, because a little bit too much of a uh, conservative way of trading, I suppose, uh, for some out there. But for myself, uh, does does you know does keep you safe from those from those longer term uh, moves. Anyways, looking at the three day right here, um, we're actually not going to see the three day Stokes turn up until we see a closure above ninety four fifty. The next closure coming in on the eleventh, so that won't be tom uh, that will be tomorrow. Yeah, that will be tomorrow night at eight p.m. Eastern time. Man, I feel like my brain is working incredibly slow today. Apologies for the uh, apologies for the uh, for the freezing over here. Uh, but yes, you know, it's essentially saying uh, if on Friday we close above 94.50, uh, momentum is going to turn back up alongside with it, and I'd very likely look for a, a retest of this little this little stutter step right here at around 97, yeah, 9700. Um, again, playing out all of the hidden bullish divergences along the way, and realistically at that point, it's uh, you know short term pullback, yes. Um, however, realistically, very likely to test the top side of the range at that point. And, uh, and of course, because we are still kind of, you know, marking off this as an ascending triangle, I suppose, you know, as long as these higher lows do hold, even though I, I, it doesn't, it doesn't look exactly perfect. I would say it does look a little bit unorthodox. Um, technically speaking, I do believe that the measure move on this would still be viable. Because uh, what this would still be looking like is is reaccumulation. If this was gonna if this was gonna turn down as distribution, we really would have expected it to break down below 8,900. That the the, uh, the past week it did not. It had plenty of chances. One, two, three chances into the 8,900-ish region. Uh, so realistically, can't be bearish even on like short term or I shouldn't say short term, but medium term and long term. As long as we're above 9,250 and then 8,900, kind of where the last buck stops, I suppose as uh, that is what the blue lots are holding on to for right now. But uh, but yes, measure move on this one um, would be pointed up north towards about 11,100. That would obviously include a higher high being printed above what Bitcoin did in, tw uh, in early February of 2020 which would officially revert the weekly trend. Now, here's the thing. So remember when we came into this month, this current month of July, the big focus was on the monthly, bi-monthly, and, uh, and quarterly as Bitcoin was closing all those months and, and getting new ones opening up you know, in July. And so this really does set in the higher term timeframe bias as you know, basically what we were saying 
as long as Bitcoin, you know, as, as long as Bitcoin's above the 21 on the monthly, it's not bearish, you know, long term, but that's a humongous range down to the mid uh, mid 7000s region. So realistically, you know, Bitcoin keeping it up right now is that just looking at the two. I, I mean, I really like the two month right here. You know, I'm, I'm trying I'm trying to debate my, with myself, like, you know, is there legitimate is, you know, is it worthwhile to be uh, positioned towards a downside right now? You know, it's it, it is a still it, it is still quite a big month on a bi monthly or, or sorry, quite a big range on a bi monthly all the way down to about eighty one fifty right here just for the ten simple and, and it would still maintain this uptrend over the long period of time. And sorry, let me put it on log scale so that it makes a little more sense. Yeah, it looks quite nice. Uh, two month Stokes turning up as well, although probably need a little more history on that one. Um, but fair enough, you know, perspective over the long term, as we did say that coming into, you know, coming into this month. Uh, because of the closures above this level, it really didn't make it. It really didn't make it like overall macro bearish. But I'm 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 starting to look at this as the 7500 or, or 8100 ish move really getting faded, uh, depending upon how Bitcoin reacts right now. So, you know, going back down to the daily, of course, I, I, I suppose the more documentable way of doing this would be using 9000 as a base for that last prior low, and then and then 9250 is kind of like a more uh, short term, medium term pivot, which obviously as long as you're above there, you know, can't really be can't really be too bearish off of this. So that is going to start to influence my trading behaviors coming into the coming into the end of this week and starting into next week, um, as I probably would like to start buying a few call spreads based off of this. I'd, I'd still want to see the weekly close. I'd still want to see the weekly close here, but uh, but a closure on a weekly, especially above, let's call it 9450 would start to look pretty damn good. But keep in mind, weekly stokes will not turn up until we close back above 10,000, which this is still problematic in the background. So I, you know, I do want to be, you, you know, you're seeing me go back and forth here quite a bit. And I want to be very open and honest and transparent with my indecision on this, because there are multiple things can, you know, conflicting with each other, as I don't like trading against weekly stokes. However, hard to, you know, hard not to, or sorry, uh, you know, hard not to when we look at the lower term time frames and lower term time frames not even being like super low, but the two day and three day both looking, looking for more, I'd say. Um, so fair enough, you know, it's I, you know, I guess that, you know, at the end of the day, that's why you have your that's why you have your pivots and trust in your levels, I suppose. Uh, let's go check out GBDC. How's, how's this one shaping up right now? Yeah, big bounce coming into yesterday, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, looks, you know, looks like it wants to give another test back up to 11, a uh, little bit north of, of 11 bucks right there. So fair enough. Uh, GBDC chopping all over the place. This this is a much more difficult chart to read. Much, much, much more difficult chart to read. Jesus Christ. See how the weekly is shaping up. Yeah, does look, does look like a low right there for right now, but still another two days left of uh, trading to go. A lot can happen in that time, but uh, but you know, again, you know, with the overall strength in traditional markets right now, and and the long term correlations between Bitcoin, Bitcoin's macro structure and and traditional essentially, and just the world markets in general, I suppose, if Bitcoin was going to have a chance to move to the upside and actually prove prove a lot of people wrong, would be this would be this would be one of the times where it'd be really uh, appropriate. I suppose. Um, anyways, all right, cool. Let's go check out some Forex. Let's go check out, or actually before we check out some Forex, let's go check out Mr. Buterall. Mr. Buterall heading back up to the 200 simple on the weekly, by the way. Uh, make sure that you are using a more long-term chart for this one though, because uh, if you don't, then you won't be able to populate these higher term time frame moving averages or these higher period moving averages better set over here. Um, still the same thing though, you know, I. <laughs> I'm 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 always hesitant to go long into a 200 simple on the weekly, but uh, but daily is looking good. Looks like a nice flagging out and uh, and breakout actually. I believe or where is my chart that I was doing this one on? I think it was this one right here. Yeah, for stamp. Yeah, if you are looking at this as a bull flag, it actually did break out yesterday, uh, making a new high along the way. Technically, that does have a measure move pointed north towards about 283 region, which is quite literally right in line with 14th February high. Um, also significant because that would actually create a higher high on the weekly and revert the weekly trend for the first time in, um, in a year or since, uh, yeah, January, 2019, when it reverted over here for a little bit of time. Yeah, quite, uh, okay. 
I would actually be looking for Mr. Buterall to lead the way as well. It does seem like the more healthy chart, or at least a more aggressive chart for right now. Um, if we could see Mr. Buterall uh, take out 249 spot 77 and especially 253 spot 69, I do think that we will actually see that area tested once again, uh, all the way up north towards this prior high right here. Play out that measure move from the um, from the daily flag, but again, as always, need an invalidation point for something like this. You know, overall, it's fine as long as it's above about 225. Uh, you know, similar to Bitcoin's uh, 8900 region. Um, okay, let's go check out some forex. I've actually been really enjoying watching some of the bigger pairs more recently. Uh, let's go look at uh, yen USD. Looking bullish to me looking very bullish. In fact, all the dollar parents are looking bearish right now. Although I still have to, still have to say long term, very long term for Dixie. I can't, I can't really be bearish off that, but that's, you know, that's looking like years out, I suppose. Uh, looking at this chart right here. Yep. Looking for a move back up short term to uh, not point, not, not 93.85 region. Retest these highs. It looks like a nice uh, ascending triangle consolidation going on right here or symmetrical, whichever way that you want to plot it. I'd kind of play it the same way. Any sort of a move back above this region right here is looking pretty damn good. Uh, 95.65 long term, I'd be looking for a move back up towards uh, about not point not not nine nine five region. This kind of prior high right here would be in line with that measure move. But it looks like I already did it. Ah, let's start this one out ages ago. Um, pound dollar. Pound dollar move, even the fucking pound shit coin moves up versus the dollar. Jesus, man. Uh, short term, medium term, be looking for a move back up to uh, one spot, two seven. Uh, Swiss franc dollar, I'd be looking for a short term move back up here. Looks very constructive. I'm breaking out of this nice little flag formation right here. Very good base uh, over a long period of time. Um, I suppose that would be one spot, zero seven region. And uh, and my favorite little shitcoin, pound yen, still looking at a move back here, still looking at a move back up towards uh, 136 region, uh, which has kind of slowly been way, uh, working its way towards. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to Bitcoin. See what's uh, see what's going on right now. As uh, we're 26 minutes into this video, we didn't really go over the short-term time frames. Now, four hour, do we see any sort of divergence going on right now? Yes, we do actually. So short-term divergence is in play, and. Uh, I would, and I would say that that is confirmed. Do we get another move back down to test around 9,300? I, I, I think, I think that would be quite likely short term, and uh, momentum also is turning down at the same time as well. Let's see what what would be needed to switch them back up to the upside. Needs a four hour total closure above 9,400 ish region. Okay, very interesting, huh? Okay, so where does this come into trouble once again? I'd still, I'd still say 9,300 ish region for a four hour closure. Um, as long as it's above there, I don't really see any real reason to be like short term and medium term bearish here. Now, if Bitcoin does lose 9,300, we'll call, I would look for a move back down to about uh, nine dollars $9, base into this region right here and then play out this range of shit and piss that we see between about 8,900 to 9,100-ish uh, region. Um, not very welcomed by my side. Jesus, man, not that shit again. Um, let's see, what, what is the three-hour printer right now? Uh, more or less the same chart. Three hour stokes turning down at the same time as a four hour and will remain to the downside as long as we're below 94.25. Uh, buy hourly showing 94.50. Momentum remains to the downside as long as we're closing below there. Don't see anything else too much of interest. We did get the golden cross in the two hour, but I don't really care about it as much on a time frame like that. Uh, in hourly showing 94.20 as well. So fair enough. It looks like it is in for a short term pullback here. Uh, I'd be looking somewhere around the four hour 21 at about 9300, which does line up extremely well with the top side of that blue box. And um, and I would be looking for an initial bounce off of there. Uh, however, if that bounce does fail and we do see a closure below this region, then yes, uh, like I said, I, I would be looking for a move back down here. But uh, but until then, I suppose, you know, it's just another opportunity as uh, the short term time frame trend actually does revert here. Very short term time frame to be fair. Anyways, go check out uh, CMEs. Do we see some uh, some similar? Um, no, there's actually not the same sort of bearish divergence here. So, you know, when in doubt, if I don't see it on both, which one do I do? Which one do I refer to or do defer to? Uh, well, it'd be CMEs. And in this case, CME doesn't have any any bearish divergence actually present on the four hour. Um, I'm curious, what's the highest term time frame that it actually does have bearish divergence on? And that would be the two hour. The two hour and the target for that one's mostly been met down to about uh, 9400 ish region right around here. Um, same same sort of territory, same sort of ranges for this one overall. Uh, Bitcoin spots 9300 region would be about 9350 for CMEs. If uh, if that's the chart that you can, if uh, if that's the chart that you actually want to follow. 
Um, looking at the 12 hour looks very constructive, looks good. I, you know, I do think that it tests down very short term here, but I do think that, uh, ultimately it's going to get another shot back up, uh, at least another try back up. This is looking pretty damn good actually on the 12 hour. In fact, momentum also is work, uh, working with price action here. I got trend lines all, over, uh, all along the way. Uh, daily looking fine as well. Daily momentum also does will remain to the north side. And remember that we were following this trend line on uh, on daily Stokes here. There we go. I guess maybe not on this maybe not on this exact chart, but something like this that has been playing in since uh, since April 20th. And we and we said that we were going to have a chance to break this trend line for the first time in a few, I guess a few months since May. And confirmed looks good also made a higher high above this area right here so looking good um i do think that uh, i do think that this gets another continuation drive higher at least on the uh, short and medium term okay all right um what else do i want to say before i before i start to wrap this up oh let's go look at some probabilities okay um for probabilities i suppose right now would be the appropriate time to be looking at a low term time frame i'm going to use 9250 um for a closure as that is a good a nice solid pivot um, for the downside, for the short term and medium term downside, I should say. For the upside, I'm going to use 9600 as a closure above uh, above 9600, uh, right around here. And I would target a move back up towards about 98 to 99, play out that hidden bullish divergence for what we saw in the two day and three day uh, time frames. So let's see. Uh, yeah, there we go. Alrighty. Uh, wow, pretty much equal to both sides. 34%. Uh, probability close to the downside below 9250 and 9600 to the upside now obviously 9600 is a lot more of an interesting proposition right now just because the upside is it was you know from a delta perspective a lot more interesting right here um however both of them very high so uh it should be noted though that the rings are squeezing to the upside now this is on current let's go look at future but i would imagine it's going to be more or less the same uh Bali and pigs mom's momentums is turning up <laughs> it's actually been pretty damn accurate and you know what uh, credit to them because this is uh that that did catch the last kind of switch up uh rather well um where some of my other tools did not so i think that this one has a place in my roster uh looking at the 12 hour rings are are obviously governed to the upside as well and uh momentum momentum waning a little bit here is is waning a little bit here but overall um we are in a little bit of a strange situation now this is another thing that i want to follow with this indicator so um, I, I believe that this is actually uh, public access. I don't, if it's not, then I apologize because then it's not may, maybe uh, very relevant to people. But this is very interesting right here from a momentum perspective because I'm not seeing this on, on, on RSI. But we are printing higher highs on, um, on, on, on the momentum histogram right here compared with what Bitcoin did in uh, late June when it put in this high at about 9,700. So essentially what that, the picture that that's kind of showing right now is that if Bitcoin does fail to, to create a higher high over 9,700, we will likely very we will very likely come back down to the nine thousand dollar low as that will print and confirm hidden uh hidden bearish divergence you know making a higher high on the oscillator plus a lower high in price action so for right now bitcoin's still in the process of trending it obviously hasn't confirmed anything you know anything resembling a high on like a 12 hour or a daily but if we do head back down below 9250 that or 9300 even uh, and close a four hour below there that would be a pretty damn good red flag uh, that we would be headed lower um and, and obviously that would confirm a, you know a lower high and then we'd be looking at this saying we actually do have some divergence there and probably do you know play out a move to the downside of the range once again uh, and in this case would be around nine thousand bucks but for right now like i said still training so still fine and overall looks like um overall looks like like i said if, if bitcoin's gonna have a chance to do it now would be a great time now would be a great time Okay, um, I suppose with all of that said, let's uh, let's go back here to the lower term time frames. <clears throat> Going blue box to blue box, I suppose 9550 to 9600 target is still very much available. I do think that short term though, Bitcoin likely plays out a little bit of a uh, little bit of a retracement here, maybe maybe down to like 9300 ish region. Um, but as long as we do not close any four hour delta's below there, all good. And I'd be looking still for 9550 to 9600 to get tested. If Bitcoin does close above 9600. I would look for the extension to play out the full uh, hidden bullish divergence uh, um, uh, read on the two-day and three-day all the way up to about 9900 ish region right here. By the same token, if Bitcoin does break below 9300, especially on a four-hour closure, then I would be looking for a move back down to the $9,000 low and play out the fucking muddy, sluggy territory that we've all come to uh, know very well over the last uh, few months. Anyways, I think that's a good place to leave this one off. I want to take a second to wish you well once again. Take care, and until next time.